from the Culture War Encyclopedia Dungeons and Dragons Goes Woke and Broke. This video is based on an entry in the Culture War Encyclopedia with all the citations, proof, links, images, embedded videos, and so on. See the one link below to go to the Culture War Encyclopedia. Please subscribe and watch it grow as I add entries and updates. To go to Just in Trouble on Substack to get my written reports, please subscribe to that too. So subscribe to us on Alternatives, see that one link below for all of that, and to donate if you will. Let's get Tabby on webcam for her gaming channel for funny, sexy, culturally offensive commentary from Tabby there and on my channels. You all have been demanding it, so let's get her on camera again. Here we go. Donate if you will, and also subscribe to her channel. Now for the main event. Dungeons and Dragons, D&D Goes Woke and Broke from the Culture War Encyclopedia. Dungeons and Dragons D&D is a fantasy role-playing game or RPG that has existed for decades. It involves dice, maps, pencils and paper, sometimes miniatures, and lately they have been developing an online version of the game. Players can create characters and role-play those characters in a setting created and directed by the Dungeon Master. Various kinds of dice are rolled in the game for a healthy dose of unpredictability. There you see a photo of what a game might look like. Much of the fun for players is in creating their character's role and race in the game. Your character could be a fighter, a magic user, a thief, and so on. Your character could be of the human race, of the race of elves, of the race of gnomes. It's your choice, and it's fun to roleplay as another race or as one uh, a member of the human race. Here we have a picture, uh, a sh still shot actually from Futurama, that's the episode uh, where they had Gary Gygax as a character. Gary Gyga Gygax is the creator of Dungeons and Dragons. Notice that there is only one human race in D&D, and it's been that way since the game was created in the 1970s. Let me hover over the footnote, according to Britannica. Furthermore, you can choose for your character to be interracial, that is to be half human and half elf, half orc and half human, and so on. At least you could choose to be interracial until now. Now they self-flagellate and promise to be, quote, diligent in extracting past prejudices, stereotypes, and unconscious biases, unquote. Hover over the footnote there. Though there is only one human race in the real world and in D&D, they now consider race to be a, quote, problematic term. Hmm. After decades of fun, it seems the company behind the game, Wizards of the Coast, they are called, has gone woke and broke. I'm not just repeating a phrase here. Reportedly, they have in fact been going broke and they have in fact gone woke. In what has been called, quote, their latest step forward in their long march to lost profits, unquote, they have decided to ruin the game in the name of woke progressive social justice. According to a report by Bounding Into Comics on April Fool's Day, no less, uh, 2023, quote, this forthcoming update was first announced publicly at the recent D&D Creator Summit, an event wherein Wizards of the Coast gathered a number of notable personalities ranging from game developers to con content creators and provided them with a sneak peek at Dungeons & Dragons upcoming releases." Unquote. Now we'll return to that. It seems that the company has been going woke and broke for some time before this latest self-destructive move as an April 3rd, 2023 interview with Kale Stutzman quote, game director at Wizards of the Coast, unquote, according to his own LinkedIn, indicates. In this interview, things like inclusivity and equity are discussed, as well as LGBTQ, disabled, BIPOC, and marginalized people in a way that makes it obvious that the people in charge of Dungeons & Dragons, the Wizards of the Coast people, focus on such things routinely. You would think that they would focus on things like, I don't know, making the game more fun, 
like new worlds, suggesting adventures maybe, plots, not ruining it out of wokeness. But, but they're too focused on their quote convictions and ideologies of inclusivity unquote to foster fun. They spend resources removing terms like savage and dim-witted because it makes dim-witted people feel bad, for example. Because, as they say, they are committed to making it clearer that, quote, hate is not welcome, unquote, as far as they are concerned. Let's all applaud how good they are, such virtuous people. Are they still allowed to pretend to use physical violence in the game? Tabby and I were talking about this last night, like, okay, if they're gonna go this far, no hate speech, okay, well, can you growl at each other as you're fighting, maybe? Or is that too hateful, or...? If verbal violence is not allowed, uh, it, like, you know, pretend verbal violence isn't allowed. <laughs> fantasy verbal violence is not allowed. Well, what about fantasy, like, pretend physical violence? Are, are you not allowed to swing swords at dragons anymore, or...? What's going on here? So is fighting toxic masculinity now? How about verbal violence? Is that too much, uh, violence there? <sighs> According to this interview, they have inclusion reviews, inclusion collaborations, inclusivity readers, and a director of inclusivity who says they are, quote, paying market rate for consultants to look at things and advise, unquote, them on, quote, an entire inclusive review process, unquote. Apparently, there is such a thing as a, quote, cultural consultant, unquote. Oh, goodness. So here is part of the interview, quote, we need to walk our convictions and ideologies of inclusivity to make it clear hate is not welcome. We are going to publish content guidelines so you'll, so you'll be able to review it and comment on it. We're making changes on an ongoing basis. For example, Savage is gone. Dimwitted is, dim is gone. Unquote. The interviewer brings up equity in the economic sense, as in, you know, people being able to perhaps not afford their products and play along with their friends. You know, one of them's like something about, well, you know, sometimes somebody just needs a pencil and paper and they can use somebody else's dice and that's that. But if you're going to make this an online version of the game, well, obviously that cuts people out who are economically disadvantaged. And so what are you going to do about it? equity and they actually say the interviewer says to Stutzman this game director guy quote how are you going to address that unquote it's as if the interviewer is saying some people can't afford your products which is classist and marginalizing of the economically disadvantaged so how are you going to ensure that everyone has equitable access to your products comrade now at one point the interviewer says Quote, I feel like the challenge of any game development has been inclusivity and including marginalized people in the development process. And by accessibility, I mean LGBTQ folks, disabled folks, BIPOC folks, and it's easier when that's tackled from the beginning. Can you give us... And by the way, let me step in here. It... It's like this guy's demanding, like, okay, you're trying to run a business and make games, but you should let us uh, in, and, like, you should let us determine things while you're doing it. You should, like, let us look over your shoulders, you know, all us gender non-conforming trans rainbow people. You should let us in, and, uh, you know, let us just uh, ruin everything for you. And uh, to some degree, that's been happening, it seems. We'll get to that. The interviewer goes on. Can you give us more direct answers? And I think they mean about what you're considering from the get-go, how those voices are being heard. And there are any, and are, and they are, I think he means are there any features like Sim 4 due to direct community feedback have now included a very robust skin tone range you can use for your Sims, unquote. Game director Stutzman replies that they're designing their character create feature to give players what they want before saying, quote, and then on the inclusivity, we're talking to people. Like Tabletop is using inclusivity readers and we're going to do, this, do the same, unquote. 
Um, this source writes that, quote, the director of inclusivity then stepped up to address this further, unquote. <laughs> they have a director of inclusivity, and he stepped in to start answering questions for the guy being interviewed. The game developer guy, Stutzman. So the director of inclusivity stepped in, and he stated, quote, I don't think it's the sole responsibility of marginalized people to creative inclusivity. Um, you know, there's a lot of typos in this interview, the way they typed it out. So, you know, we can imagine what they kind of said. We have a, um, and grammar and other errors. We have a diverse lighting approach where it's like the NFL roomy rule. So for every requisition we're hiring for, it's tied to executive performance. We have an entire inclusive review process for D&D, MTG, Arena Marketing, and etc. I guess these are other products by Wizards of the Coast, I suppose. What inclusion review means is that we have different gates and stops to look at inclusion and accessibility, so we're paying market rate for consultants to look at things and advise." Unquote. It's as if this director of inclusivity stepped in like a lawyer answering for a defendant. The interviewer says that they think that, quote, accessibility and inclusivity is, wait, do I, well, hold on, before I move on, hold on here. What the hell is a diverse lighting approach? <laughs> that in its, uh, that's a head scratcher right there. And then when they're talking about, like, the NFL roomy rule, now there is a, they mean, no doubt, Rooney with an N rule. Um, which is basically a sort of affirmative action thing. You have to interview so many people of uh, different identity groups. You just have to, yeah, you know. Um, that is, you have to do, you have to have them sit down and stuff. You're not allowed to eliminate. You just have to do it. Um, and if it's not, uh, if it doesn't match the merit quota, <laughs> or if it doesn't, I mean, if it doesn't get for if it's not, uh, it's basically forcing it so that you divert from the most sensible thing, which is a, a system of merit, like who is best for the job. They say, no, 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 you, you have to interview so many people who are this, that, the other thing. Now, um, where was I? The... The interviewer says that they think that, quote, accessibility and inclusivity, unquote, is, quote, awesome, unquote, and goes on to say that getting hired by them is, quote, difficult, unquote, if one is, quote, not a white male, unquote. The D&D folks respond by saying they're, they are changing their review process to ensure mo more diverse hiring, quote, which means really digging into what's asked and removing any bias. I love ensuring that we have diverse slates of interviewers so we aren't asking our women, women, our marginalized communities, our disabled team members, etc. to do more interview work. Unquote. The interviewer then says, quote, cultural consultants are often used to shelter from criticism. What about promoting or hiring marginalized people into decision-making roles? And what are the policies and procedures in place after recommendations are given so they are acted on?" Unquote. It's unclear if the uh, director of inclusivity or the game director responded to that, but it is written as such that someone responded to that with, when it comes to consultants, we want to hire the best people for the job. <gasps> That's corp. That's like capitalistic meritocracy, right wing, evil stuff and racist. Yes, thank you, Tabitha. It should be about equity, not about merit. So, okay, again, I'm sorry. I'm just shocked, and I'm a little triggered now. So, but I'm gonna have to go back to the beginning of the answer. Quote: When it comes to consultants, we want to hire the best people for the job. A great game designer. A great game designer is not a culture expert in the broad academic experience of people of color. So yes, we're always paying attention to questions <laughs> in our workforce. What is our pay equity, etc.? We want to create a workforce and workplace where a disabled person or a person of color, etc., can create and never talk about their background if they don't want to. <laughs> what the fuck? 
we we want to make sure we're engaging with experts how do we make sure we're acting on it because we do the consult <laughs> the consultants give us the info so we can that's kind of snarky <laughs> the consultants give us the info so we have made an educated decision the recommendations are documented and the changes are documented to be sure it's addressed unquote it's it's kind of like they're talking to a robot lawyer but with a rainbow thing on his lapel of course and uh yeah and well no it's probably a gender non-conforming robot lawyer with a rainbow lapel thing yeah because at one point the interviewer states quote there's a lot of lack of confidence and distrust in the community right now many of us were attacked for even coming here unquote now Gee, anyone want to take a bet what he means, or she, or Zibzimzar means by being attacked? Maybe they mean like there was a tweet or two from people that's disapproved of them going there because D&D is not uh, radical enough yet. That's what I'm willing to bet. I'm willing to bet nobody touched them or put their hands on them for showing up at this convention or this sci-fi yeah. thing or whatever it is that they're going to. Comics convention, I guess. You know. But the interviewer also asks, what are you going to put in place to... Uh, what? Damn it. You, this person really needs to edit their work. Okay. The interviewer then asks something like, I'm not sure because there's a lot of typos here. What are you going to put in place... I guess in terms of protections and res to, I guess, restore the lack of trust that the community feels. Some of the reply was, good question. I think this is what we're doing. We're engaging directly. <laughs> now, at some point, someone called Dixon, they don't explain, says, we want feedback aimed at us, not the creators working with us. You shouldn't take abuse for things we do. Unquote. And uh, he's at that point, if you read in context, but they're talking about uh, content creators, bloggers, people make YouTube videos, and people like the interviewer that is interviewing them. What a political answer. We want feedback aimed at us, not the creators working with us. You shouldn't have to take any abuse for things we do. That's on us. We are committed to spanking ourselves for not being inclusive or... We're naughty. We'll take care of it. Mm. <laughs> you won't. You uh, fucking know it. Stop pretending. The interviewer then asked this uh, Dixon, wondering what wizards will do for us after the conclusion of this event, but people are still going to yell at us. We've experienced that for a month. It wears down our mental health. It hurts me seeing all the people in this room who took abuse and not seeing wizards do any, he means wizards of the coast, do, do anything about the harassment we've received, unquote. And <laughs> Jesus Christ. You know, when we were walking towards your table, some people yelled at us and said, don't go there. Those are bad racist people, those D&D &D people. What are you going to do about it? And uh, are you going to let this are and uh, people who are marginalized into your company to oversee your process of making things more equitable? Are you ever not going to be annoying? <laughs> we'll start there. <laughs> you not be annoying. Oh, boy. And that's that. <laughs> <laughs> this is incredible. It really is. Oh, uh, so this Dixon replied... Sometimes we step in and it settles things and sometimes we say something and it inflames things further. We don't want to create the Streisand effect, so we need feedback from you as to how we can step in and do it better. We're too we stupid to figure this out. <laughs> could you all help us so that we don't screw up again? Uh-huh. Which this is us screwing up again, but <sighs> hopefully you don't notice. Oh <laughs> um, god giant neon sign above them. <laughs> We're screw-ups! Oh, oh, Jesus. Yeah, we know. <laughs> we know. This is incredible. Uh, we want to be active listeners that create better solutions with you that works for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. The interviewer proceeded with 
A speaker noted that a lack of response can be just as bad as a poor response. It comes across as yeah, comes a crock. Well, that's yeah. It comes across as a crock. The interviewer proceeded. Quote, a speaker noted that a lack of response can be just as bad as a poor response. It comes across as a lack of communication. Wizards of the Coast has a PR department. We do not. And he means, I think, uh, content creators, bloggers. We're passionate about this community. I think they mean uh, we're passionate about this community. We appreciate you trying to formulate the answer because we're being attacked in the meantime while you're waiting. Dixon agreed that sometimes Tabby is yeah it's hard to listen to this and take this seriously but okay Dixon agreed that sometimes we need to respond quickly and sometimes we need to step back reassess and formulate an answer unquote now one of the wizards of the coast uh, people over there replied yes there are issues we need to address and do it better I'm not going to stand in front of you today with a plan that is half baked Yes, it's going to take some time to make a plan for the future. We are... It's like they're playing some game of chess. It's a little bit like people in a courtroom being really cagey. It's a little bit like dueling in slow motion. It's a little bit like playing a game of chess. And they're just, you know, everybody's being careful to not say something that the other person could point to and say, Oh, hate speech! And they're just, they're tiptoeing around each other. It's really weird. It's like a duel where they tiptoe and, and stuff around each other. Wow. Okay. Where was it? Yes, it's going to take some time to make a plan for the future. We really encourage you to talk to us and give us truth that's unvarnished because the only way we'll be able to make that feedback useful. I think they mean it's the only way we'll be able to, yeah. Okay. They must mean that. I want people feeling comfortable speaking truth, whether that's in surveys, coming into our Twitter DMs, etc., because that gives us the information needed to make actual changes. We are working towards getting that solved and making a space that's better for all creators. The interviewer says then, when creators are constantly taking the hits on behalf of Wizards of the Coast, because where the people, people can access, it takes a toll and wears on us. Are you putting together mental health and support resources because we need them? Okay, now again, let me make this clear. This is not somebody who works at Wizards of the Coast or anything like that. This is an interviewer, somebody walking up to Wizards of the Coast people at a convention and saying, hey, can you do an interview for whatever blog this is? Uh, that I cited and them saying yeah we'll do an interview and here's the interviewer he's saying well are you going to pay for our mental health stuff because people yelled at us as we walked over here what the goddamn hell this is a clown world circus so this is great I love this part I wish I could hear the tone that this was actually said in, but I, I'm going to say it the way that I think they said it. The reply came, It's a super difficult problem without a straightforward answer. The interviewer then had a sense of entitlement. Enough to say, Employees have access to mental health resource and support. We as freelancers don't. It's become toxic. We're here because we love this game. It feels like you don't have our back and we need you to. <laughs> it's so... It seems like the interviewer is demanding free healthcare. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the, the reply was an apparent deadpan. Here it is. Thank you for sharing that so openly. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I want to act this out because I, I love this. Okay, I'm going to act this out without like without explaining. Employees have access to mental health resources and support. We as freelancers don't. It's become toxic. We're here because we love this game. It feels like you don't have our backs and we need you to. Thank you for sharing that so openly. The interviewer persisted. There have been several missteps in the handling of race in D&D. Handling of Hadozi. I'm not sure how to say that. Long-standing issues about orcs, changes to the term race, and more. Tasha addressed it a little bit. 
What's your game plan for addressing this in the future? What is Wizards of the Coast's high-level approach for handling it and how to rebuild trust? You can see with this interview, all right, and this is just one, there's other stuff out there, but you can see just with this interview what is going on in, in, in the following terms. You can see that there have been people who are demanding that D&D make changes to be more equitable and woke and progressive, right? And you can see that they're really doing this. They have professional people at conventions to step in and be like, wait, I'm the diversity and inclusion expert here. Let me answer that for you. Like a lawyer saying, don't answer that. Let me answer that. All right. And as the pattern goes, right, the stronger party here is making concessions and stepping down, right? And we see this sometimes. A little kitten will step up to our wolf, and the wolf will step down because the wolf is the better party. Stronger party, but more mature, and the wolf will sort of back off and be like, okay, okay, right? So You win, midget. Yeah, so the D&D &D people, they're backing off and they're making concessions. They're like, okay, we won't call it race anymore. We'll call it species and this and that and the other thing. And then here's this interview, we're like, okay, well, how about free healthcare for pe people who don't even work here? And how about if you let us into your building and watch over the process? I mean, people in wheelchairs, people who are gender not conforming to, and people who are uh, people of color and uh, people of this. And, and why don't you let us in on the whole process from the whole beginning and give us free healthcare too? Because, you know, we were yelled at. And, like, they don't, they're, what's the whole thing? Uh, give them an inch, they want a mile. You know, here it is. They're, you know, you just. There are certain people where if you back off a little bit, they think this is it. We're gonna go in for blood now. We're gonna and they just they don't they don't get it. Neither party gets it because the strong party is backing down when really it should just sort of swat it away or ignore it. I mean that's that would be the best case here with the Dungeons and Dragons folks. Just ignore these lunatics. They are seeking you out and to browbeat you. And they do not represent... I mean, look, uh, I read in an article, we'll come to that eventually, that you're, you've are you been losing stock. Maybe with this new movie you'll gain some. I kind of doubt it. Look at the pattern that's going on here. This, this weaker party is, like, thinking, like, I better take every little inch that I can possibly take and demand and demand and browbeat. Wow. Well, because this kind of idiocy usually is short-lived. Yeah. And ended with death and or recompensation which means you lose everything you stole <laughs> so i can see their need to spend through it as fast as they can they're sort of um yeah trying to use it up before it gets taken away their outrage mob cr uh, credit their cad they're spending real fast here yeah all right, so backing up a little bit, the interviewer is like, uh, the interviewer is asking, what is Wizards of the Coast high level approach for handling it and how to rebuild trust? The Wizards of the Coast people reply, we're doing inclusion reviews, sharing it to a pro, sharing it to another pro, making changes, share it back to the pro and see it if it addressed it, addresses it. And we want to make the game as welcoming as possible to as many people as possible. But a fact of what happens in that is, is I think they mean, is there that some people will then dislike those changes. Species is one change we're testing. And they're referring to the fact that they change the term race to species. And they don't mean races and black and white people. They mean races and human race is now a species. And the elf, uh, the uh, race of elves is now a species, and the race of dwarves is now a species, etc. Uh, they continue, species is one change for testing. No decision has been made yet. The interviewer went on, what is wizards of the coast? They mean core value at a high level with queer, trans, etc. players more visible than possible. I don't know what they mean by that. Which has dangers. More visible than ever, po ever before possible? Or? Which has dangers. What's your core o core audience? What is your plan for race? Now, somebody tell me to try to understand this. What the hell are they talking? What the hell is they talking? Queer trans players being more visible, which brings with it a danger. What the hell are they talking about? 
Are they talking about maybe like these conventions? Because they they have these conventions, comic conventions, and whatnot. And sometimes people set up a table there and will just play for hours and hours and hours, which seems a little weird to me. Why go to a convention to do something that makes it so that you can't enjoy the convention? But whatever. Um, so maybe they're talking about like with people who are sitting openly playing D and D at conventions that are trans and gay. <laughs> All right. So the interviewer is asking, "What is your core audience? What is your plan for race?" The response comes, "More, not fewer. We're trying to widen the play space. We're always making steps in those directions." I think they mean to write. I think today's audience is bigger than it ever has been. I, but I also think it's a fraction of what it could be. So we need to be more inclusive. We need to look at what content is not welcome in our spaces because it reflects hate. We need to walk our conventions, convictions, sorry. We need to walk our convictions and ideologies of inclusivity <laughs> to make it clear, hate is not welcome. We're going to publish content guidelines so you'll be able to review it and comment on it. We're making changes on it on an ongoing basis. For example, Savage is gone and Dimwitted is gone. The interviewer responds or asks or whatever. It often sounds like changes are made at the end of the process to be inclusive. I think we'd like to hear more about the steps taken in the early stages. Who is in the room from day one making sure not only is it something that can be caught in the review, but make sure it's never in the book in the first place. <laughs> Tabby's rolling her eyes, shaking her head. <laughs> just no. Just no. How can you even comment to something? Yeah. Like, just... <laughs> wow. Oh, I'm God. Glad they still gave out lobotomies like candy. Yeah. Those people obviously found somebody doing it. It's like an interrogation. It's like the Inquisition. It's also a bit like a, a chess game in which the rule is that everyone must use progressive protocol and the objective is to be the guy coming out looking the best by sticking to the woke protect pro protocol. Yeah. Right. Right. We all need that little bastard. I mean, really, it's it's who who sticks to the dogma the best. Some people out there might be thinking 1984. Remember 1984. One way to uh, determine between somebody who is. Um, a good thinker and a bad thinker is whether or not they use the protocol, whether or not they use newspeak, uh, or the right per, or the right proportion of newspeak, because they're kind of in the process of changing over from English to newspeak. But you can I and what's going on in the world today? What's been going on for decades? Uh, there's been this constant sort of process of wokeifying the language or using uh, leftist language. And they use it to identify each other and also to point the finger out and say, look, that person used the wrong term. They said crippled. They didn't say differently abled. You know, or whatever the term is. They, they said colored people when they should have said people of color. That's how we know they're racist. So it's like Newspeak in 1984. And it seems like that that's what these people are playing, this sort of dicey game, and that's part of the rules there. Uh, they continue, and this is the response. So one of the people being interviewed says, Diverse teams make stronger and better teams. Having folks in the room who can offer different life perspectives. The inclusion review process came out after Spelljammer. We'll explain what that is later. So now everything going forward has these cheeks in place from the beginning. And the very formulate formation of the idea. The process we have now... it." could never have happened in Spelljammer. It, uh, it would be caught early. One shudders to think of the horrors that must entail this emotionally traumatic experience, this Spelljammer, whatever this might be. Now the interviewer then says, given that 95% of the questions have been addressed by your inclusivity and diversity team, people, Dungeons and Dragons has inclusivity and diversity teams. How do you plan to expand and support the team? <laughs> It'd be funny if they're like, look, if we hire you, will you shut up? 
if we just give you a free job and what we'll, like your job would be on Twitter and just say nice things about us. Would you shut up? Zip it. Yeah, zip it. What did he say? Stifle. Will you stifle yourself? Stifle. Yeah. <laughs> the response came. They come to me and as they express needs, we address them. The interviewer then asks, will you be hiring more because clearly more community support is needed? This, this annoying little gnat. <laughs> so the uh, interviewee responds, our team works, uh, they mean hard, to help serve you. We may not get to everything immediately, but we will es escalate internally. <sighs> how pitiful, nay, how contemptible this kowtowing is. This is horrible. The interviewer then uh, asks, with all of this discussion of inclusivity after having cut Black Dice Society, whatever that is, and other similar BIPOC shows, that's uh, uh, Black Indigenous People of Color, shows how can we trust you i know how much it takes to run a show it's great to talk about equity and inclusion but money talks so what about seed money or something because a D, &D back show means a lot pulling the rug out from under us is hard i want someone who can touch the money to answer this question and the response to this was i don't know the history the interviewer then bounced forward. It's not about the history. It's about moving forward. They might as well be like, give us money. Just give us money and we'll shut up. Just give us money, you racist. Give us money. Give us money, you racist. Oh, wait, wait. Let me count that. Give us money, you're sexist. Let me count. Oh, more. Okay. Yeah, give us money, you you turf. Uh, let me count. Okay, 500. Okay, all right. Then can I have a job, too? From home? I get the tweet from home? All right. <laughs> anyway, they go... Interviewer says, it's not about the history, it's about moving forward. The interviewee responds, I love to follow up more afterward and hear more. This isn't about easy questions. I wasn't at Wizard when this happened. I was brought on to lower barriers to access and to represent the voice of the creator space in D&D. <laughs> it's almost a little bit also yeah. like a store owner begging a mob to not torch their store. It's kind of like that too, but, you know, not in the sort of shrill tones that one might have in a situation, but a calm version of that. Please go to the next door. Burn that one, not mine. I'm a good thinker. Later, the D&D people say, Even reprints are going through inclusion review. That's why some older books are changing too. Fahrenheit 451, anyone? Or The Memory Hole, anyone? Etc. Yeah, that's why I said don't do digital books by paper. Yeah. You better hope the paper one you bought has not been edited. Yeah, well, you got to get the old books, you know. So, like for example, here's yeah, here's one. The dates of print before they become too expensive to purchase. I suggest you all get your shit together. Here's an old one. This one was old when I was young. You see that one? Does that look familiar? You might have seen that. He used yeah. books, places, or whatever. That's back when they were owned by TSR. Later, the interviewee, one of them, says, "Quote." The Feeble Mind spell is a problematic name. Unquote. Um, they go on to say that, and we'll explain that a little bit later. They go on to say that due to changes, players can no longer create half orcs or half elf characters. Actually, we won't. We won't explain that. So, let me. Okay. So, apparently, there's something called Feeble Mind spell, and apparently, that's problematic in its name because it's marginalizing of the feeble minded or whatever. <laughs> You know? Okay, only if you think of them in that way, but whatever. Yeah. Like, I don't think of them like that. <laughs> and by the way, this is slightly tangential, but this has to do with the whole Newspeak thing. You know, some of the words that are now insults were not insults in the past, and they're always moving this line. So, at one point, imbecile was just a word that one used for somebody who, uh, when I was a kid, was called mentally retarded. Um, but then the word retarded is supposed to be a bad word. 
So there's all these different words, and, it, and as soon as people get used to it, they say, well, no, that's a bad word, we're going to change that, and they keep going forward. So there are charts out there and show you, like, a timeline, and when the word imbecile was okay to use, and then, uh, so, you know, um, etc. I don't think, despite what Frank Reynolds said, that net nitwit was ever the proper term. I don't think that was ever used, technically. I don't think there was ever. Uh, ref- I don't think these places were referred to as nitwit schools. I don't know. Uh, but you know, you have developmentally disabled. Uh, I think is acceptable still now, but give it some time, and it won't be. It will be uh, indicative of a wrong thinker to use the the term in the future, no doubt. So, um, where was I here? It's feeble-minded. Uh, the feeble mind spell is problematic. So apparently, they're going to change that. Uh, they go on to say that due to changes, players can no longer create half-orc or half-elf characters. So these are half-human, half-orc, half-human, half-elf. I don't know if there's anything as co- uh, such a thing as half-elf or half-orc, but it really is up to you when it comes down to it. And the game does say, at least when I was a kid, it says somewhere in the beginning, look, these rules, take them as suggestions. Uh, if it's not fun to use a given rule, don't use it. Here's the thing, though. If they don't give you sort of guidelines, it becomes kind of difficult. You sort of have to create things from scratch, and online versions won't have uh, any way to make half orcs or half elves uh, interracial characters, uh, apparently. And so there won't be character sheets for that. There won't be uh, characters like that in their games and their movies and etc. Uh, they say the idea of a mixed race character is, quote, inherently racist, unquote. They do not, however, attempt to explain why. Hilariously, Stutzman, the game director, the guy that was main, mainly being interviewed, identifies still right now, as I say this, in his Twitter, Twitter profile as a half-elf. Okay, so isn't that supposed to be racist? But here he is still. Let's go to his Twitter. All right, so here's his Twitter profile, Dungeons & Dragons Digital, uh, Kale Stutzman, game director for D- D&D Digital, designer, programmer, artist, writer, musician, half-elf bard, he, him, pronouns, college of creation, etc., and so on. So, right now, he's still a half-elf, and that's supposed to be racist or whatever, or something like that. Also at that sum- summit, Bounding Into Comics reports, let me hover over the footnote, on April Fool's Day, no doubt, which makes me scratch my head, maybe we're being trolled here, but still. Look, there's endless sources saying that they've been making these changes over the years. Okay, so maybe this one interviewer is mocking the stuff, but these people do exist. They are making these changes. They do have these uh, uh, people on their staff, diversity experts and equity whatevers. So maybe this interview, but the thing is, if you can't tell anymore, whether it's a satire of the real thing or the real thing, that's really just highlighting how ridiculous uh, the real thing is and how it's sort of mocking itself without realizing it. But anyway, also at the summit, Bounding Into Comics reports, quote, the post-demo Q&A turned to the topic of Wizards of the Coast's ongoing efforts to sanitize D&D beginning with the question about how exactly the publisher makes use of their sensitivity readers. Okay? This is another source saying that they have sensitivity readers, so it's not an April Fool's joke here. Quote, We don't send everything to the same people all the time, unquote, Crawford explained of their content review process, unquote. They are referring to Jeremy Crawford. I had to look this up. The principal game designer for Dungeons & Dragons, according to his LinkedIn, they further quote him to say, quote, different reviewers have different areas of expertise and experience. Everything gets sent to at least two people, sometimes more. The old inclusion review process had holes in it because they would only send out what they thought would be a problem. Now everything is sent out so we aren't guessing what might be a problem, unquote. Quote, our team are game designers and storytellers. We're not experts in culture and inclusion, unquote, he added. Sin's a little snooty, a little resentful of this crap. Quote, so we're focused on what damage should uh, this creature do. Uh, In other words, like what, you know, a monster in a game, how much damage points should that creature do, whatever, how strong should it be. 
That's why everything goes through inclusion review now, so everything in our game brings out delight. <laughs> he probably says through gritted teeth. Even reprints are going through inclusion review. That's why some older books are changing too, unquote. Further on they write, Crawford then confirmed that due to the game now having four elf variants for players to choose from when creating a character, standard elves, high elves, wolf elves, and the drow, the player's handbook would soon be revised to do away with, quote, half, unquote, species. Quote, Frankly, we're not comfortable and haven't been for years with any of the options that start with quote unquote half. Not only do we think we're bad, but we recognize that we have been for years, so don't blame us for just doing this now. Under the pressure of social justice warrior mobs. We've learned. Sad. <sighs> Frankly, we're not comfortable and haven't been for years with any of the options that start with quote unquote half, he explained of this decision. The half construction is inherently racist, so we simply aren't going to include it in the new player's handbook. There, by the way, you see a screenshot from a website, uh, D&D Beyond official website, um, and apparently it's still there. And it's you can see half elf, and about you know a little bit about a half elf and a half orc. Um, but anyway, unsurprisingly, Crawford did not expand on his accusation and his reasoning behind this claim remains unknown. And that's the thing, folks. I went looking for what did they say? How, how did they explain that having a half-orc is racist or a half-elf is racist? And I can't find anything. Nor can other people. They express their frustration with being unable to find it. Um, you know, sort of big blogs like Bounding Into Comics and uh, uh, Gizmodo and stuff like that. But anyway, let's back up to December 1st, 2022, when they announced, quote, We have made the decision to move on from using the term, quote unquote, race everywhere in, quote, the game, and, quote, do not intend to return to that term, unquote. They stated that they, quote, understand, quote unquote, race is a problematic term that has had prejudice links between real world people and the fantasy peoples of D&D worlds, unquote. And that they, quote, have also evolved the lore of peoples throughout D&D Multiverse to the D&D Multiverse to be more diligent in extracting past prejudices, stereotypes, and unconscious biases, unquote. And that they, quote, are presenting a replacement for the term race, that the new term is species, unquote. And they, they say that the term, quote, was chosen in close coordination with multiple outside cultural consultants, unquote. <laughs> they wanted to replace race, so they decided upon species. And they say the term, quote, was chosen in close coordination with multiple outside cultural consultants, unquote. Of course, they do not actually explain how or why these things are problematic or racist or whatever. That day, Bounding Into Comics reported, let me hover over the footnote, quote, the change comes three months after Wizards of the Coast apologized to players of Spelljammer Adventures in Space for its rules depiction of an alien species that many found to be a racist caricature. 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 Then, <laughs> thank you for... <laughs> That's a hard one when you try and say it out loud. Caricature. Look... Caricature. I can't say Worcestershire, watch. Worcestershire. It's Worcestershire. Again, this is bounding into comics saying this. Let me hover over the footnote. Uh, December 1st, 2022. Quote, the change comes three months after Wizards of the Coast apologized to players of Spelljammer Adventures in Space for its rules depiction of an alien species that many found to be a racist caricature. In then in November, Wizards announced it would work with quote multiple outside cultural consultants unquote to vet new material before its publication unquote. What was this alien species that many found to be a racist character that was and what was this apology? And what you know this apology here that they allude to they link to I had to read it and it's called Statement on the Hadazi or Hadozi I'm not sure how to say it by D&D people, September 2nd, 2022, and they state, quote, 
We want to acknowledge and to own the inclusion of offensive material within our recent Spelljammer Adventures in Space content. We failed you, our players and our fans, and we are truly sorry. The campaign includes, right now I'm picturing the South Park episode of the guy that heads B&P Oil. We're sorry. We're so sorry. <laughs> Petting puppies, feeding children, we're sorry. The campaign includes a people called Hadozi, which first appeared in 1982. Regrettably, not all portions of the content relating to the Hadozi were properly vetted before appearing in our most recent release. We want to continue to learn and grow through every situation we recognize that to live our values, we have to do better. Throughout the 50 year history of Dungeons and Dragons, some of the characters in the game have been monstrous and evil, using descriptions that are painfully reminiscent of how real world groups have been and continue to be denigrated. We understand the urgency of changing how we work to better ensure a more inclusive game. Effective immediately, we will remove the offensive content about Hadozi in our digital versions and these will no longer be included in future reprints of the book. Our priority is to make things right when we make mistakes. In addition, we've initiated a thorough internal review of the situation and we'll take any we'll take the necessary actions as a result of that review. Unquote. Again, they don't explain their reasoning. We're left to guess. That's all they give us. The only thing left that they, they don't say, but they give you one more thing, which is a link to a PDF, which is a screenshot from a page from their Spelljammer game package book thing or whatever, referencing the Hidozi. And here it is below. Okay, and we can read this, but it doesn't... Okay, let's just see. Hadozi story text, page 13, this is a footnote or something. The story text for the Hadozi has been updated as follows. Hadozi's progenitors were mammals no bigger than house cats. Hunted by larger natural pred predators, they took to the trees and evolved wing-like flaps that enabled them to glide from branch to branch. Today, Hadozi's are sapient, bipedal beings eager to leave behind the fearsome predators of their home world and explore other worlds. In addition to being natural climbers, Hadozis have feet that are as dexterous as their hands, even to the extent of having opposable thumbs. Membranes of skin hang loosely from their arms and legs. When stretched taut, these membranes enable Hadozis to glide. Blah, 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 you get the idea, okay? So what in the world or any other world is racist about an intelligent extraterrestrial bipedal gliding monkey? What the goddamn hell? I mean, before we went live, Tabby and I, we were trying to wrap our heads around it. No one could seem to figure it out. I mean, the best guess, I think we would agree, is that maybe it's something about, well, if you have talking monkey characters, that means you're making fun of black people. Maybe. But I mean, look at the picture. How is that? That looks nothing like a black person, a white person. <laughs> I mean, give me a break. It looks like a flying squirrel in sort of a humanoid form uh, if they were at a Shakespeare festival or about to go on some sort of aviation assassin run here or whatever. But what the goddamn hell? What the goddamn hell? No one can seem to figure it out. Physics Geek, uh, whoever they are, tweeted this. Uh, you can read that, but part of their tweet is... I must have missed the memo when Stormfront purchased Wizards of the Coast. And, That's actually a good one. <laughs> right. That was snarky. I like that. Um, well done. Yeah, and that was retweeted by this person, the Gorgamon, Gor, Gormogons. I'm not sure what that is. Um, GP, why would Wizards ban half species in Dungeons & Dragons? This hate crime against mixed children, mixed thank race you. children... <laughs> Dabby says thank you. This hate crime against mixed race children erasing them from fantasy games is yet another example of the pure malevolence of the leftist, corporate, and creative classes. 
Returning to the D&D statement, the, retur- the statement from the D&D people, they profess, quote, we are eternally grateful for the ongoing dialogue with the D&D community, and we look forward to introducing new, engaging, and inclusive content to D&D for generations to come. D&D teaches that diversity is strength, for only a diverse group of adventurers can overcome the many challenges a D&D story repre- presents. In that spirit, we are committed to making D&D as welcome and inclusive as possible. This is part of our work. Oh, this part of our work will never end. Unquote. Ah, yes, the triumphal, never-ending march of the Cultural Revolution. All we need to do is to pile up the past, comrades. The books need to be burned, thrown down the memory hole, and eradicated, and all the wrong thinkers eradicated. Onward ho, comrades. Onward towards our glorious future, the utopia, forever perched on the horizon, inviting, always receding out of reach like an eternally setting sun soaked in blood. Thanks, everyone. Laughter my shield, knowledge my steed, wit I may wield, but question my read, liberty my right, truth my sword, love my life, honor my reward. Thanks, please subscribe, please share. Here's all the sources, by the way. Again, this is a video version of the written version that I've been reading from. There will be a link in the description to this. And this is just one part of my Culture War Encyclopedia. So if you go there and you click on Dungeons and Dragons, what we just went over is what's there, at least for now. And uh, hopefully it won't get worse. Hopefully I won't have more to add to it, but I get the feeling there'll be a lot more to come. Next thing you know, they're going to say drow is racist. You can't have drow. You're black. Like, what, you, so they can't exist? Wait. Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> it's going to happen. Ugh. You know. So, what do you folks think? Leave us a comment below. Okay, so races are not races anymore. It's not good enough to say that there's one human race and one elf race. Now, it's species, okay? But it's also races that have half orc and half humans and half elves and half dwarves. And what the fuck are they talking about? I don't know. They don't even know. That's why they can't answer the questions. Yeah, Make well, they're not. They're not answering, but somehow... Okay, so they're hiring diversity experts and inclusivity consultants or whatever the fuck, right? And so they've been convinced to get rid of these racist aspects of their racist games, right? Just, but then when they're asked about, well, why is that racist, they can't say, even though they have the, they're paying these people to answer these questions... And they can't answer these well, questions. But how do they convince them to make these changes? They're just like, well, it's racist. Okay, we'll remove it. And so when when pressed to be like, okay, well, what's your reasoning? Well, well somebody just needs to ask them a simple question. Are they pro-segregation as well? It seems like they would be. Well, that's what I mean. Somebody just needs to balls up and ask them straight to their fucking face yeah. in a live stream. Are you also pro-segregation? Because... Your pro separation of the species, right? The races, right? And you know, no different than the KKK was in regards to the species and or right. races. Hence, the person saying, "Gee, I didn't know Color Stormfront people, took over D and D." Yeah, it's like the KKK took over D and D, and this is it. Much. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Till next time. Bye bye. Mm-hmm.